Good morning, students. Today in this class, we will be discussing textuality and reading. In the last class, we talked about narrative modes of thinking. Now we move to an important section that is textuality and reading. It often comes as your essay question. In this, you will be studying author, text, and the reader and their rules. So it is a very important section and more of a theory kind. So please listen carefully. If you have any doubts to clear, please do it today itself. So textuality and reading. We will be discussing all those things pertaining to the text and reading. And in all these classes, I am trying to tell this point that narratives represent reality. It is a version of reality which you see in all these narratives. And all these narratives are interpreted with the presence of a reader or a listener. So the role of reader or listener is very important. It is the reader or the listener who fills the gap, who is given the right to imagine, to interpret, to find a pattern in all these narratives. And narration and narratives are basically a combination of these components. First one is teller or author. Second, tale or text. And third one, addressee or reader. You know that the text gets its life because it moves into the hands of the reader. But the role of the text or the tale and the importance of this interpretation by the reader is always questioned. There is a set of dilemma associated with it. We will address that later. And all these narrators are a combination of these three elements and you know from that diagram all three are interlinked. Teller tells a tale which goes to addressee and it connects to the teller as well. Here, Samuel Chapman gives a diagram in which he explains this process of narrative communication. So this diagram was introduced by Samuel Chapman in 1978. And according to Chapman, as you see in this figure, Real author and real reader is outside of this process of narrator communication. Inside the narrator communication, we see only implied author or narrator and there will be something which is narrated and there is this implied reader. So, according to Chapman, real author and real reader are left out of this communication process, narrator communication process, because he believes that the implied author as well as the implied reader are functioning inside this narrative transmission. And he also explains that the narrator narrative pair is also narrator narrative pair is also a kind of an optional position and therefore he identifies these core three roles in literary narrative transmission there will be author it will be implied author and narrator who will be in the text and there is this reader or implied reader. So we will explain these terms in detail in the coming slides. Implied author and implied reader. So please remember this diagram. 
wheel or the end wheel bleeder comes outside. They are not part of this real process of communication, narrative communication. Inside the narrative communication, we see implied author, narrator and implied reader. And now we move to the typology of author or narrator. So we are discussing the early points in detail in these sections. Who is an author? Author is the person who creates the text. He is the creator of the text. And it comes, the word comes from a Latin term, octa. And later it was extended to cover all those creatorship of factual and fictional text. The people or the person who created all those factual or even fictional books, they were given this term octa. And then comes the term author. And it was in the 15th century that we see this term associated with scholars and poets which continued to the early 18th century and now we have this little distinction there is no such distinction between creators copies editors they are all known as authors so author basically a simple definition it is a person who creates a work a creates a text and author is that individual who with his own intellect with his own imagination who tries to create a literary work a work from his own experiences from his own wisdom from his own reading experiences and he makes, creates a work of his own. And narrative voice, narrative voice of that text is a critical part in the construction of a story. And that is an important decision from the author. Uh, Story, the structure and you have a narrative voice, are at Kadabarina, the point of view, not Kadabarina. Other than Sentient Victim of Kadere, our construction, and you have Kadera structure created in the Parana narrative voice. So, narrative voice is a major element in the construction of the story, and so from the part of the author, it is very important to identify the kind of person he is fixing as a narrator. Author, he is fixing another, he is when he starts writing. Because the narrator is the one who reveals the interest, desire, and even limitations of a person. And thus, take the story forward. As you know, this narrator is an important component in this process of narratology. The narratology is basically about the analysis of this narrator, where does he belong, and how does, how much he participate in this story, or the element of trust you can attribute to the narrator. So there are narrators known as unreliable narrators. Unreliable narrators in the region. Kada Parina Ada. Kada Parina Ada. Vishwasi Yogi Mai Parina Igilu. At the end, you will understand that it is all a lie. For example, the famous example, it is of course Robert Browning's My Last Duchess, in which you see uh, the uh, husband of Duchess narrating a story, but the end, at the end you will understand that it is all a lie. From film it can be, um, from the movie, if you have seen this movie Forrest Gump, it is actually a novel by Winston Groom. Winston Groom takes the position of an unreliable narrator. He claims that Forrest Gump is a ping pong champion. He has um, become something like NASA astronaut. 
at the end you will understand you in the uh, when the story progresses you will understand that it is all a lie there are many hollywood films like that where you see unreliable narrator you will trust the words of the narrator but at the end you will find yourself deceived there are many stories like that most of them crime thrillers so narratology tries to understand how this narrator participate in the story where does he belong the element of trust trust you can associate with the narrator's voice the element of reliability and these are the things these are the issues which the author thinks about when he starts writing a text idella author aalochunnada rendu karyangalana when he starts writing etra maatra where does he belong where the narrator belongs what extent he can participate in the story then the element of trust the element of reliability idella the author makes a crucial decision before starting his story and the concept of implied author what is that so it is very important it comes as your short answer question pardon me uh, for bringing all those uh, all those horrible ideas of examination in between these classes with a audio examination point of view nu padikkunnad kondana njan ingalukku short answer question as a question nakku parayunnathu appo adu oru ormai irunnu idu sudhichirukka so what is this concept of implied order so in that diagram you saw this diagram you saw this uh, real order outside the box and implied order inside so who is this implied author so this is actually a term which you see in the work of wayne seabood in his work rhetoric of fiction he brings in this idea of implied author and later he explains implied reader too implied author is also known as inferred reader inferred author sorry so who is an implied author implied author is actually a construct it is the image of the writer produced by the reader when he reads that text normal text to i can go ammada manasile we create a picture of the author his intentions his perspectives his bias the ellam ayanda chindagari idella nammada manasile kuda povum adu ayikkana nilla ee parayna real author real author varai irukum but from the text we get a feel or we get to know a certain author who has these kind of intentions these kinds of traits from that we infer an author who is known as implied author appo nammala vicharikkuna aal thaniya irikkanam ennilla ee parayna implied author so there will be there will be certainly a disparity or dissimilarity between implied author the author which we as a reader imagine from the text and the real author for example agar tamasha parayanengil for example there is this movie ayal kadai eduyan adinathu mohanlal he is a novelist who write all those pulp fiction appo adinathu parayana re dialogue undallo നിങ്ങൾ കാണുന്ന നിർമ്മല നിങ്ങൾ വായിക്കുന്ന നിർമ്മല എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ആഴുതുന്ന നോവൽ അത് ഞാൻ തന്നെയാണ് പിന്നെ വേറെ ഒരു ഇതിൽ മാഗസിനിൽ എഴുതുന്നു അത് ഞാൻ തന്നെയാണ് സോ അപ്പോ വായനക്കാരുടെ മനസ്സിലുള്ള ആ ഒരു ഓത്തർ ആണ് ഇംപ്ലൈഡ് ഓത്തർ ആൻഡ് ദ റിയൽ ഓത്തർ ഇസ് ദി മോഹൻലാൽ ക്യാരക്ടർ ദിസ് ഇസ് ഓൺലി ഫോർ ഒന്ന് എക്സ്പ്ലനേഷൻ ഇതൊന്നും എക്സാമ്പിൾ എഴുതരുത് സോ 
that is implied author. So that is the kind of narrator created through the assumption of the reader, from the imagination of the reader and it can be, it need not be identified, it is not identified as a separate character but as a voice or a tone or a telling medium. So, implied author ne voice on the other hand, tone on the other hand, telling medium in the other hand. Paladaram Markaru Vega on the inferred author on the other hand, model author on the other hand, the other hand. So, implied author is neither the real author nor the narrator, it is actually the image created by the reader. When he goes through this reading process, when this reading process of the narrator continues. And as I said earlier, it may be also called as inferred author. And implied author is not the true voice of the author. The writer can use this precise tone, pace, while narrating one work alone, and he can use another tone, another pace in another work of his own. So, implied author is not the true voice of the author. So, that is implied author. And I will also explain what is implied reader as well. Implied reader. Implied reader. Implied reader is what the real author imagines who the reader will be. In a cell, the reader imagines an implied author angle. Again, title is the author of the reader. Implied reader. That is the implied reader. For example, when there is this famous work by Sinclair, I know you know this, who wrote a work titled Jungle and in that work he was giving out a horrifying account of this Chicago's meat packing industry and his idea was like when this goes to public and when they when my readers read this they should actually take a socialist action to improve the workers' lives. They should take a proactive position and they should work to improve this working class living conditions. But actually, most of these Americans who read this, they, they never had this concern for these workers. And they started, instead of uh, acting in a proactive manner, it ended up moving them only to agitate for improved sanitization in meat packing. Apo, avadate condition, working class, uh, condition, living condition, improve chenam on the area, area the, avadate chenam po, avadate chenam po, avadate chenam po, meat packing industry le, sanitation, and other sanitization process, by their motion manner, you will have to react to your mind. So, there occurred something known as mismatch. Avadate, author of this to the implied reader, chenam on the other side, avadate chenam po. So, implied author is what the reader imagines when he reads a text and implied reader is the one the author imagines as the target audience or the target reader of this work. So, these are the concepts implied author and implied reader. Now, we come to the next part. The narrator in narrator. So you can see different kinds of narrators. 
സിനിമ കാണുന്നു അതിനകത്തെല്ലാം പല തരം നറേറ്റേഴ്സ് ആണ് ചിലപ്പോൾ നറേറ്റർ വിൽ ബി പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദ സ്റ്റോറി അറ്റ് ദ ടൈം നറേറ്റർ വിൽ ബി ഔട്ട് സൈഡ് ദ സ്റ്റോറി നറേറ്റർ വിൽ ബി ഇൻ സൈഡ് ബട്ട് നോട്ട് പാർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദ സ്റ്റോറി സംതിങ് ലൈക്ക് ദാറ്റ് ദീസ് ഇതെല്ലാം ഓരോ ടേംസ് ഉണ്ട് so here we will be studying all these terms so the first one is heterodiegetic narrator who is heterodiegetic narrator as we all seen all these novels most of these films ellathil idana eto predominant i mean eppalum eppalum kaanunna narration and heterodiegetic narration aan that is there is this other person tell and this other person stands outside the story so this is basically a third person narrator and it is it also has this name like omniscient narrator so he will be playing something like a god like part he will be outside the story and he will be an all knowing person ella arnjondu narrator and narrator in the portu and kada parayunna so that is heterodiegetic narrator we are that telling narrator stands outside the story third person narrator and he is also known by the name omniscient narrator now coming to next one it is heterodiegetic and intradiegetic narrator so here heterodiegetic nu parayana netra parana pole narrator is outside the story but at the same time he is inside the story so the famous example is wuthering heights by emily bronte why should i now in the urdhana il aanu yan ponadu so these are the novels i read during my degree days yan degree ku padichathu ningal appo vaikanam nirbandhamum illa vaichal nalladhu yan literature padichirunna ee parayna vaakkal illa വായിക്കാൻ സുഖമുള്ള വാക്സ് ആണ് അതെല്ലാം മദറിംഗ് ഹൈസ് ജെയിൻ അയർ ഷാൾ ഡിക്കൻസ് ഇതൊക്കെയുള്ള എല്ലാം നമുക്ക് ഒരു ലക്ഷറി റീഡിങ്ങിന് പറ്റിയതാണ് മദറിംഗ് ഹൈസ് ഇസ് സംതിങ് ദ ക്യാരക്ടർ ഇൻ മദറിംഗ് ഹൈസ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഹീത്ത് ക്ലിഫ് ഐ തോട്ട് മൈ ഐഡിയ ഓഫ് എ പെർഫെക്റ്റ് മാൻ ഇസ് വോസ് അറ്റ് സം പോയിന്റ് ഓഫ് ടൈം ഇറ്റ് വോസ് ഹീത്ത് ക്ലിഫ് അപ്പോൾ അങ്ങനെ ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞാൽ നിങ്ങൾ കണ്ടോ കേൾക്കും അല്ലെങ്കിൽ വായിക്കും ഞാൻ വിചാരിക്കുന്നു അറ്റ് നോൺ അവരൊരു ഒരു സ്ത്രീയുടെ ഒരു ഒരു ഏജിൽ വെൻ യു ആർ ഇൻ ട്വൻറ്റി ഈസ് ടു ഒരു ട്വൻറ്റി ഫൈവ് വരുന്നവരെ ഒരു പെർഫെക്റ്റ് മാൻ എന്നുള്ളത് നിങ്ങൾ മദറിംഗ് ഹൈസ് വായിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ബി ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് ഹീത്ത് ക്ലിഫ് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് ദിസ് ഫേമസ് ലൈൻ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് സ്റ്റിൽ മൈ ഫേവറേറ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് വാട്ട് എവർ ആർ സോൾസ് ആർ മെയ്ഡ് ഓഫ് his and mine are the same so this is mothering heights so there is this character main characters are heathcliff and his pair catherine catherine and shop so this heathcliff comes as an orphan to this family and catherine falls in love with heathcliff but during due to certain circumstances they can't marry and all those violent actions so here in the story we see a character named mr lockwood mr lockwood comes as a person who takes this house of heathcliff so heathcliff is the landlord and mr lockwood comes to this family and he uh, has this um, he comes into contact with this uh, maid of this family that is Mary and from there story begins from there the story unfolds so we mostly see this story from the eyes of Mr Lockwood it is the, it is he who is narrating the story but he is completely outside the story he has no part in the story okay ആള് വരുന്നു ആള് വന്ന് താമസിക്കുന്നു ആളുടെ കണ്ണിൽ കൂടെയാണ് കഥ പോകുന്നത് പക്ഷെ ആളൊരിക്കലും നറേറ്ററിന്റെ പാട്ടല്ല ആള് വരുമ്പോ തന്നെ മോസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ സ്റ്റോറി ആസ് എൻഡ് കാത്രിൻ കാത്രിൻ ഡൈഡ് അങ്ങനെ കഴിയുമ്പോഴാണ് ഈ ആള് വരുന്നത് തന്നെ അപ്പൊ ഹീ ഇസ് ഓൺലി എൻ ഒബ്സർവർ ഓഫ് ദ സ്റ്റോറി ഹി നെവർ ഗെറ്റ്സ് ഇൻവോൾവ് ഇൻ ദോസ് ഇവന്റ്സ് സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ഹെട്രോ ഡയജറ്റിക് ഇൻട്രാ ഡയജറ്റിക് നറേറ്റർ 
And third one, it is homodynetic narrator. That is, the narrator will be present as a character. It is something like first person narrator. Uh, in the text, it is given the example of this film, Tirakkada in the cinema example and text, where you see this character of Prithviraj narrating the story. So, he is part of the story, he is a character in the story. While being a part of the story, he narrates the whole story. So, that is homo diegetic narrator. And auto diegetic, as you see in all those autobiographies, where the narrator tells their own story, their own personal experiences. For example, what you see in Kamaradas, in all those autobiographies, Gandhi's autobiographies, you see the narrator's own experiences being narrated. That is auto -dietic. And next is first person omniscient. So the, in the first one, it is hetero It is also omniscient narrator, but that is third person omniscient. But here, it is first person. I in the world of the world, I in the world of the world, the example given here is the story. Uh, it is lovely born. So it is about a young girl who is killed, but uh, but he of she observes the family members who are struggling to cope up with the grief of this disappearing girl. So this disappearing girl is watching what is happening to uh, her family after her disappearance. Well, that is known as first person omniscient. So, narrator is a character in the story but knows the thoughts and feelings of all other characters. It is like a narrator who is godlike. Narrator inside the story who is godlike. And sixth one, it is alternating personal views. So, that is common in an alternate year, from third person to perspective of characters. Most of the stories, for the, there is an example, American Beauty, or a famous Hollywood film. It starts from this person narrating, uh, talking about how uh, uh, I died. where perspectives, where the characters in the perspective are intermingling. So that is alternating personal view from third person to perspectives of characters. For example, even Harry Potter, it is discussed in the text. It is told in third person, but suddenly it moves away to omniscient from omniscient to other characters' point of view. For alternative views, And next is stream of consciousness voice. It is, you have all those interior monologues of narrators you get to know all those inner desires, inner motivations. And most of them, it will be something like incomplete thoughts. And the major proponents, if you uh, have, uh, you know these names like uh, Virginia Woolf, James Joyce, a portrait of an artist as a young man, work like to the lighthouse and William Faulkner, the sound and fury. Well, we see the narrator expressing he saw her desires through in the form of interior monologues, which is in the form of a stream of consciousness. And last one, it is epistolary voices. Our text interesting example is this film. If I am now in letters, the story unfolds, the story moves forward. So, they use these letters and all other types of documents to convey the plot of a story. So, here, it, it may not have a single narrator, but the author tries to communicate mostly through these letters. Most of the information comes out through these letters. And one of the famous examples is Frankenstein by Lady Shelley. So, these are the different types of narrators. Hope it is clear. In the next class, we will be dealing with 
the tree or textuality. So we have finished, we have only finished the first part of textuality and reading the author. Author in which we discussed implied author. We also discussed, discussed implied reader as well. And then we discussed all those different types of narrators. Hope it is clear. If you have any doubts, please clear it. Today itself, thank you guys. Have a nice day.